good. Okay, welcome everybody. We'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. This is our regularly scheduled Venita Utilities Authority meeting for Tuesday, April 16th, 2024 at 530. The Venita City Council meeting room, the time is now 530. Uh, to start off as normal, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance and salute to the Oklahoma flag. Joining us today uh, is James and Ariana Franks. If you would please lead us in the pledge and the salute, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I mean, the flag of the state of Oklahoma, it symbols peace to all people. Great job. <clears throat> James, Ariana, thank you again. And we'll see you again soon. Mr. Prince, roll call. Roll call. Members Wofford, Tyler, Here. Swift, Here. Hoskin, Here. Hare, Here. Langford, Here. Briley, Here. Young. Here. All members are present. Okay, thank you. Any uh, visitors or public comments? I don't think we've had any filled out for the yeah. VUA meeting. Looks like we have a good crowd tonight, though. Uh, number four, consideration to approve consent agenda. This only consists of one item tonight. The minutes from the April 2nd, 2024 VUA meeting entertain motions on the consent agenda. So moved. Second. I have Briley and Tyler. Motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the consent agenda is approved. Item five is unnecessary because no items were removed from the consent agenda. Item six, discussion, consideration, and possible action to purchase backhoe parts and service labor uh, from Warren Cat in the amount of $6,698.17. Mr. Smith. Um, well, this is for our backhoe kind of went down on us um it has a diesel particulate filter which is has something to do with the exhaust and um it's got a bad relay in it and the grand total comes to six thousand six hundred ninety eight dollars and seventeen cents uh james has been nice enough to let us borrow a mini excavator but we sure would like to have our backhoe back I have Langford and Hoskin for the second. Do okay, I have a motion and second to approve the purchase? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, that purchase for 6698 is approved. Item seven, discussion, consideration, and possible action to hire Trevor Lawson is a full-time VUA employee effective April 21st, 2024. Again, Mr. Smith. Um, I'd say Trevor's probably the fastest learner that we've ever had. Uh, he does a really good job, doesn't miss any work, um, and um, he's always smiling. So if we can, <laughs> if we can clone him, I would take more of Trevor. So I would say yes. Anything from the members? <clears throat> I make that motion to approve the hiring. I have Langford and Hoskin. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve the hire of Trevor Lawson. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, that item uh, is approved and the hire is approved. Item 8, VUA Superintendent Report. Mr. Smith, anything else to add? I thought I was finished, but um, the only thing I have past my electronic report. Um, I give everybody a copy of the tonnage from solid waste and uh, trips to the landfill, but other than that, it should be in the electronic report. Anything from the members? Anything else? <laughs> All right. Any new business? Hearing none, we would take a motion to adjourn the Justin Smith VUA meeting. <laughs> so moved. Second. Swift and Young. The motion is second to adjourn the BUA. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. The time is 534. Uh, moving on to the next agenda.
We will call this meeting to order. This is the regularly scheduled Benita City Council meeting for Tuesday, April 16th, 2024, immediately following the VUA meeting at 5.30 in the City Council meeting room. The time is now 5.35. We call this meeting to order. Mr. Prince, roll call, please. Walford? Here. Tyler? Here. Swift? Here. Hoskin? Here. Hare? Here. Langford? Here. Briley? Here. Young? Here. All are present. Thank you, Mr. Prince. Item two, recognition of visitors and public comments. No cards or emails were submitted. Okay, a lot of visitors, good to see. Uh, item three is something that we are excited about always and uh, honored to do. This is the veteran recognition portion of our uh, monthly meeting. Uh, this is a item that was started by our previous mayor, Chuck Hoskin, that we continue today. And tonight, Mr. Prince, if you would please read our citation of recognition for Randy White. Yes. Mr. White, if you would like to come forward, we'd appreciate it. Whereas Randy White served his country honorably in the United States Army from 1975 to 1979, where he served in the 1st Entry Division, the Big Red One, as a non-commissioned officer, which recognized his contributions, both personal and professional, to the 1st Infantry, Infantry. I'll take this bubble gum out, that might help a little bit, excuse me, <clears throat> Infantry Division during his service during the Vietnam era. And whereas Randy White trained at Fort Riley, Kansas for his basic combat training at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri for his advanced individual training and then on to Fort Benning, Georgia for parachute training. Whereas Randy White serving in Italy, Turkey, Germany, Greece and was stationed on the northern Iran border until 1979 where he returned to Fort Carson, Colorado completing his training and security group investigation. Whereas Randy White returned back to Venita after his service working in the Eastern State Hospital and employed as a Venita Fire Department firefighter, has demonstrated himself to be an outstanding citizen of the city of Venita, and whereas Randy White has dedicated his time, talent, and treasure to the betterment of the city of Venita and community at large. And now, therefore, I, Josh D. Lee, on behalf of the citizens of Venita, Oklahoma, do hereby extend gratitude and recognition to Randy White as Veteran of the Month in the city of Venita, Oklahoma, presented April 16th of 2024. Randy, thank you, my friend. Appreciate you. You know, there's a lot that goes into those mayor when we hear these stories from these veterans that we recognize, and they tell the story, and there's a lot that goes into this, and it's 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 more that can go on one piece of proclamation, but uh, just the city of Anita recognizing those that have served is outstanding. Um, but to hear and have those interviews with them, I think uh, it's 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 very uh, you know heartening to to hear that and. To, like I said, it's, it's more than one piece of paper that can be acknowledged, but the spirit of, of our council and, of course, Mayor Lee and, and our city, I think it's great they get to hear that. So thanks for recognizing it. <clears throat> All right. Moving on to item four, update from Mansion Entertainment Group. Uh, about a month ago, I reached out to some of our friends at Mansion, and I asked if they would be uh, willing to have somebody come up and kind of just give us an update on all the progress that's been going on and and what's going on and kind of where we're at uh, and above and beyond they flew people in from all over the country so uh, 
I'm just going to start with our senior executive vice president for Mainstream Entertainment Group, Christy Adams, and let her introduce the rest of the team as, as she sees fit. And thank you again for coming in and taking your time and the expense of coming. I know that at your theater right now in Branson, there's about 2,000 people, people being yeah. seated for a show. So thank you again for your time and bringing you in, Mr. Wilhite, over here away from, from that. So uh, you if so you would, much. please uh, turn the floor over to you. Make sure you're... Light is I need a box okay, almost. Perfect. Yeah. Am I good? Stand up, I know. Thank you. <laughs> I have a very supportive team. Mr. Mayor, Council, thank you for having us tonight. Thank you for uh, uh, indulging us with a little bit of an update. We'll try to answer as many questions as we, as we can. Um, we did send you. Were you able to pull up the? Okay, great. So we have um, Steve Hedrick here. He's our executive producer of project development. Carl Williams, our strategic planning consultant. Larry Willi, our CEO, our COO, sorry, there's a lot of O's, and Jean McComb, our Director of Acquisitions. So we're happy to go through any updates that we have right now, let you know why things aren't moving as fast as everybody wants them to move, um, and hopefully explain a little bit of that. Happy to ask, answer any questions that we can also while we're here. Do you want to run through the fly through? Steve? Yeah. What you're about to see is a fly through. There we go. Yeah, a fly through the park. Um, is there audio? All right. Bye. There it is.
All righty then. Well, uh, that is a quick tour of our theme park. Um, the um, design is coming along great. Um, we, as you can imagine, when you have life safety issues like in a theme park with all the rides, we have 19 different rides and attractions. Every nut and bolt has to be drafted and uh, everything has to be spe specific as far as height limits and uh, the speeds of the vehicles. All of that is going exceptionally well. Um, we are, um, some of you may have noticed that the uh, RV park is lagging a little behind. And that's my fault, I'm sorry. Um, I um, asked the designers to compress the RV park. We still have 750 RV spaces and 300 cabins, but I wanted to get out of the floodplain, the FEMA floodplain, what I call the, the South 40. It's probably only 20 acres. But um, I wanted to get out of that area and I challenged them to compress it. Some of our RV spaces were 80 feet long, which is excessive. So I asked them to subdivide those, and let's. Um, and surprisingly enough, the smaller you make it, the more affordable it is. So, <laughs> plus that gives us time to work with FEMA, and you know how fast the government moves. Um, it gives us some extra time to work with FEMA and get that uh, floodplain uh, resurveyed, et cetera, and get it in front of the government. That can actually be an expansion area. So this is a way to keep the 750 and the 300 cabins and potentially in the future have even more RV spaces down to the south. The same is true for the hotel. We had originally planned a 300 room hotel and then lo and behold, we found some efficiencies there and now we're going with a 400 room hotel. So again, that makes um, our uh, money people very happy. Carl is very ecstatic about this because the more capacity we have in the theme park and the RV parks and the cabins, uh, the better experience people will uh, have when they come to this theme park and resort. And guess what? If you can give them a place to stay, they'll stay longer and they'll spend more money and they'll buy gas at the gas station and they'll go to the grocery store and they'll go to the bank that's going to be built across the street. Um, so. It's a way of making it uh, bigger, better, less expensive, which is what I'm supposed to do. So I'll take any questions that you have. All right, who's up? He's on the hot seat. All right, thank you. Mr. Hedrick, thank you, I appreciate that. <clears throat> I don't know if, I, I, I think it's. I mean, Um, that is the delay, if you want to call it a delay. What's the question, sir? Well, I, I guess <laughs> I might as well just ask the question. Sure. As, as a result of the delays, what's the new timetable? We and are working on a new now? timetable, but we're confident with the team that we have, if we get rolling, that we can still produce the park in time. So... And I, I know that's, that's an optimistic approach, but we do have a world-class team together. So with that, that team in place and all of the parts, we still feel like we'd be on schedule. In the, was it, 26? Well, oh. we, we always said we were going to open in, in 2026. So um, probably latter in 2026, but <coughs> yeah, we haven't announced any delays. We haven't announced a new time yet, so. Good. Fingers crossed with the team we have together, we can still accomplish that. Well, again, I'd like to say thank you because I know it's a it's a time, uh, especially for the entire you know absolutely executive team, I guess for lack of a better word, to be here and an expense uh, to be here. So I appreciate each of you. I think it's important that the council is able to see and hear from you and the public as well. I myself, Brian, Alan, we hear from you quite often. I mean, I'm talking yeah. to somebody on the team weekly, uh, but <clears throat> nobody else knows that like sure. we do. So yeah. I, I, I really do appreciate it uh, that you come in here and taking the time and the expense, all of you, and um, even coming in from California. Yeah. So. <laughs> We're happy to do it. Thank you for your I time. We do it. appreciate it. No other questions? Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I'm sure in the future, as progress is made, I'm sure there will be more questions. Absolutely. Be more questions. Yes. And, you know, I just 
and more frequent updates. So as, as we get information, we're happy to provide the information. I know sometimes it feels like we're holding back information, but we want to give you real information. So as we all know, there's a lot of false information that circulates <laughs> around the park, around our company, around us, everything. Um, but our goal is always to provide information as we have it when we're 100% positive. So the delay is not intentional. It's just we want to give you facts that we can deliver. So. Mm -hmm. Sir, Carl? I'm the one uh, kind of spearheading our work on the chip process. We're going to need all of your all's understanding and support on, so I probably ought to make a few comments on that. Um, Jared Davison from Public Law, a public finance law firm out of Oklahoma City, and I have gone back and forth lots of times. I've said in some updates recently, I think that'll continue to be a iterative process, but we're getting, we're, we're quite far down the path. And again, that's, I mean, we're gonna need a lot of support in this room to make that happen. But the TIF tax increment finance district will support getting the utilities established and help you get the, the overall investment to make sense. I've had meetings with uh, some of your other government folks out in Oklahoma City and commerce and finance um, on how that overall process fits together. There's a leverage act component which is state supported but the neck of the funnel is right here we've, we've got to have the tip in place before we can move on to any of the state level support and that's a, a very local thing i suspect this will be the first tip that you all have had experience with um, but everyone i've talked to in oklahoma city certainly is very supportive so we'll do what it takes to get it to make sense and make sense for the city and the county which are both critical constituents so, so you're, you're saying that uh, we would need that status to get to exactly stay in the present the process your process well i i'm happy to answer answer that question i don't want to get into to doing too many question and answers but i think it's a legitimate legitimate question I think I can answer that probably for you the public finance law group that he speaks of is the city's attorneys uh, that have the, the city hired well, I don't remember when we did that October ish I don't know somewhere in there uh, and that was the ones that mansion entertainment group actually fronted the money for so it didn't cost any taxpayer dollars um, so there are there are attorneys they have been working hard on it we did form a this council did uh, move forward with the exploratory initial steps to form a committee. The committee has been picked, uh, and we had a second meeting scheduled with that committee when uh, we knew some changes were coming, uh, and Manchin asked me if we still wanted to proceed with knowing that we would have changes or if we should wait. And I thought, as well as our lawyers thought, it would make more sense to wait uh, until we had hard numbers instead of wasting people's time and say, well, no. Just kidding, those numbers have changed. So the exploratory committee or TIF review committee is what it's actually called, uh, has been formed and we're just waiting to get those rolling again, I expect. Hopefully that'll happen in the next couple months, I would think, that the latest is is my guess. I, so. I think that's right. I'll, I'll update a considerable portion of the statistics in it since back to the public finance law. They've got a big model. So after all the paperwork and everything's in, how long do you think it'd be if we actually move dirt? Move dirt. Move dirt. Well, moving dirt is different than tip. Uh, as you may have heard, the um, our friends down in Oklahoma City, especially Leslie and Cornwell, that uh, my house. 
so we have this, that $35 million worth of infrastructure <coughs> to the House, and it's gone over to the Senate, and it cleared the uh, Finance Committee in the Senate, and now it's going through appropriations. They don't foresee any problem, but as soon as that $35 million is released to the city of Neal, they will be conservative. Great. Thank you. And if you guys would like to go ahead and sneak out to get back to your 2000, I completely understand. Uh, but Mr. Wilhelm. Mayor and Council, I want to thank you for <clears throat> letting us come and share with you. Uh, and on behalf of Mr. Bicknell, uh, he, he sends his regards uh, and to let everyone know that this is still happening. He's going to see it through. He's going to be at the ribbon cutting. And uh, we're excited to do that. And thank you. Thank you, Vanita for accepting us and allowing us to be in your community and uh, we look forward to the future in a mighty way so thank you very much thank you sir <coughs> okay item five consideration to approve consent agenda is consisting of two items a is actions taken during the bua meeting b is minutes from the april 2nd 2024 city council meeting entertain motions on the consent agenda or of course as always request to remove any item from so moved have Briley and Hoskin. Motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the consent agenda is approved. Item six, discussion, consideration, possible action on items removed. There were, were no items removed, so that is unnecessary. Item seven, discussion, consideration, possible action with recommendations from Park and Cemetery Committee to purchase a diving board for the Benita Municipal Swimming Pool in the amount of 7282 I don't know if uh, Councilman Lankford or Mr. Goforth uh, would like to start with that. Uh, we run this through the Parks Committee. Our diving board is still functionable, but very bad. Uh, we think we can get through most of the season, but it's going to take about 14 weeks to get the new one in. And, and that's the cost, $7,282. And that's for the diving board and hinges. Same height, same general specs, same height. Yes, it, 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 it's a direct replacement. We'll go on the stand that's there. Uh, it's worn so bad right now, it will actually shift over to the side and rub on the rails. So. No, I think we're fine. And uh, Amber Nall thinks we're fine, but it, it has to be replaced. I don't say that Park <coughs> Second. Lankford and Bradley. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve that purchase as listed. Any discussion necessary from the council? We'd like to pull that money out of pool improvements, out of the budget. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, that item is approved. Item eight, discussion, consideration, and possible action on invoice 9074-1 for Mears Engineers, LLC, the amount of 14130 for prep grant, industrial park drainage and roadway. Mr. Goforth. This is the first installment on the engineering for the new road that the Department of Commerce has granted us the money for. Uh, the engineering will be paid for from the prep grant, so it's just passing through the city of Benita. Hoskin and... Uh, Tyler. Okay, a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that item is approved uh, for the uh, invoice 9074-14-130 for prep grant, industrial park drainage and roadway. Item nine, discussion, consideration, of possible action on estimate 865-029452 from RCN Technologies. Uh, a 30 day trial of the device and then B full contract after 30 days in the amount of $17,782.36 for seven devices. Chief Johnson. So whenever we started uh, upgrading in order to move our officers <coughs> more into their patrol cars where they could do everything from there. Uh, part of what we did was is we did our internet through Verizon uh, via hotspots. Uh, after use of those, we found that there were some issues with our CAD system because when there's a drop in the signal, it causes our, our CAD system basically to go offline. So that ends up delaying the officers. Uh, we found that that happened throughout town. Uh, things such as 
bumps, stuff like that could even cause it to disconnect. Um, the other thing was is that it's battery powered, so you had the problem of whether or not it was charged. Um, I reached out to Verizon for a solution. They came back to me with a sub company, which is RCN, which makes a hardware uh, router that would be uh, mounted in the vehicle, would run off of the battery of the vehicle, would come on whenever the car comes on, go off wherever the car goes off, and it would be a more sustainable uh, system. And it also would come with an antenna that would be mounted on the roof so that the signal strength would stay strong throughout. If there was any signal loss, it's a dual purpose uh, router, meaning that it has two different bandwidths that it flows off of. So when one bandwidth starts to drop, it automatically goes over to the next bandwidth in order to maintain what we need in order to keep our systems up. I wanted to give that brief overlay before I go on to say that A, I'm requesting for us to start the initial, which is a free trial of a single device. We have a 30 day proof of concept. In that 30 days, if it does not function the way that we would want, then we would discontinue with that device because this is not a new system, but it's new to us. And so it's just like anything else, we would like to see it work to make sure. If it does work, that's when V would come in on approval in order to go ahead and make the purchase on the final devices to get them installed. Also, a note that this does not increase the amount that we pay because Verizon is still the service provider, so therefore our monthly bill to Verizon stays the same. This is to purchase hardware itself. It's a one-time charge. There is a software, uh, like a software warranty that we are paying for for six months, and then after that it discontinues. But that's in case that there's any kind of a problem or software glitch or whatever, we would have a number to reach out to in order to try to get that fixed. And then after that, I think we would be up and running. Chief, would you remind us, I think you applied for a grant for this, right? We had that last council meeting, is that yes. correct? Yes, sir. Cherokee Nation was who we filed the grant through, and it was for $20,050. Uh, we have already received those funds, and those funds have already been deposited into the police grant. So the money to purchase these will come from that grant, so this will not be a cost to the to the budget or to the city or anything like that. Chief, just to clarify, the contract that's being proposed here mm -hmm. uh, is for um, $17,718.36 mm -hmm. for seven devices, but that only really kicks into play. We got a 30-day free trial absolutely which enables us to to say no get, if we don't yeah, to mm -hmm. get out of that mm -hmm. if we so choose absolutely right. but but you're asking us to prove the whole thing at this point in time well i'm Please asking prove. that if if it does prove to be a good concept that i would already have the approval to go ahead and make that purchase sure yeah you're, you're asking for a total approval now yeah but with the understanding that you can You'll bail us out. I will absolutely we'll bail out if it does not do what it's supposed to do because it's, it's it's not cheap. It's not a cheap device. Okay. Does everybody understand that? Okay. Good. Does this hardware mm -hmm. work irrespective of cellular carrier? So let's say we find out <coughs> well, maybe we need to switch cellular carrier citywide. Would that hardware work with, say, AT and T? It would work with any internet or cell phone provider. Anybody that produces internet, this is just the router itself and is not tied to any particular company. Um, so it would be able to be adjusted. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Chief, is that uh, subscription that you're talking about? Is that part of the seventeen seven eighty two, or is that additional? No, that is part of it. It's already encompassed in that amount, and it's for six months. Uh, originally, he had it in there as a year, but I told him that I'd rather keep it at six months, and he told us that we could go back and renew it if we wanted to renew it. It was up to us, but I, I told him we would just play it by ear at that point. So this, this encompasses six months' worth of the warranty on every device. Okay, thank you. Entertain uh, motion. I think, Council, you said we can do one motion to cover the entire... Uh, entertain motion on item nine to cover A and B. I'll put that in the form of motion. Have Young and Wofford. So the motion is second to approve uh, the purchase, uh, including the 30 day trial of said uh, contract. Any further discussion from the council? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, item nine A and B is approved.
Thank you, Chief. Item 10, discussion, consideration, and possible uh, action to reappoint Vanita residents Tony Moore, Bill Corbett, and Stephen Tamplin to the Vanita Library Board for a three-year term commencing May 1st, 2024 upon recommendation of the Vanita Public Library Board of Directors. Mrs. Hicks, I don't believe, is here. So I don't know if okay, Dr. Lankford or Mr. Toski. We have a court directors meeting. We have to do this once a year, three year term. So I will put those names out and I will recommend that we reappoint them. Second. Have Lankford and Hoskin. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve those. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Item 10 uh, that is approved. Item 11 discussion, consideration, possible action to approve a grant application to the Oklahoma Arts Council in partnership with the Benita Friends of Route 66, Councilwoman Husky. Thank you. Well, Ms. Heath and I have been working really hard to try to make the Oklahoma Arts Council work with us. Um, so we <coughs> switched the grant cycle from our software, and it's a pretty convoluted process to be quite frank about it, because you have to apply for the portal, and then they have to approve your eligibility to be on the portal before they approve for you to apply for a grant. It's, it's very, Misty is very tenacious, and she is very persistent. And when Misty sends me a text with a red face that's frustrated, she doesn't get frustrated often. So we are going to no action on this item right now, and we may do something next fiscal year with this, um, just to say it was pretty frustrating. I'm sorry, Mushy, to cause frustration, but it really is a great project, and we will figure out the funding for it one way or the other, um, and I'll talk about that later tonight. Thank you. So no action, please. Okay. Item 12, discussion, consideration, and possible action to approve a request to close the following streets during the 10th annual Benita Route 66 Festival, that is June 14th from 5 a.m., through June 15th at 2 p.m., the eastern half of the 100 block of West Canadian, as well as on June 15th from 12.01 a.m. through 2 p.m., the 100 block of East Canadian and the 100 and 200 blocks of South Wilson Street. Again, Mrs. Hoskin. Yes, this is, can you believe it's the 10th Annual Festival, everybody? We've done this for 10 years, it's a decade. <clears throat> um, so for the picnic parade, this, these are the same streets that we've closed, I think, for the last 10 years, and I appreciate it. Um, the community and especially the city of Benita's support for this festival happening downtown. We saw a video of uh, Route 66, I think that's called in the video, the little area of the theme park that was Route 66. What's the name of it? I had it a minute ago. Uh, hometown. Until that is built, <laughs> we have a real downtown Route 66 um, <coughs> that we hope that everyone will come and join us in celebrating. June 14th and 15th. We have a lot of things scheduled that are new. I will just put in some words for everybody's ear. Hot Wheels collectors, free Hot Wheels for kids, and time trials. I will say mini golf, nine holes, which will be portable for the festival and will remain in the community for use throughout the summer and seasons at different events and parks. And paint. Art in the Alley, which is a project Miss and I were working on, it's still going on. We have an artist named Rosemary Doherty, who is coming to help us with a community art project where community members will come, get cups of paint, and paint by number. The canvases will then um, be ready to be displayed in the breezeway during the summer uh, Route 66 season. So we're excited to have an artist. Um, she's in Tulsa. She does a lot of good work. She actually has some paint by number kits for sale at the Home of Hope gift shop. Um, if you want to take a sneak peek at her look. Or Thursday night at Vinny Ring, come see me if you want to have a paint come to our paint party with Rosemary. We have slots available. So that's a, a little bit about the festival. Thank you for closing the streets for us. <laughs> okay, entertain motion on item 12. So moved. Briley and Swift. A motion and a second to approve the request to close the streets as listed and times as listed. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Okay, hearing none, those uh, item 12 will be 
approved. Item 13, department reports. Mr. Goforth, anything? Mr. Tracy. Well, I filed an electronic, but I didn't get it in in time, so it didn't get in the packet. Um, I went ahead and sent it out to everybody, but just a brief update. Business as usual, bottle <coughs> patching. Uh, we've been working in Alley's box blade and <coughs> holding a bunch of rock for uh, VUA and street. I've been digging out soft spots in the road, and putting base back in. Uh, we're back in the parks, starting to mow some areas. The bathrooms are open, so we're cleaning those two to three times a week. Um, been working on a lot of equipment, getting ready to lay asphalt, so we've got a lot of stuff we're working on there. Our tack oil truck's been down for a while. We've got it back up and functioning. Uh, we've had quite a bit of high wind, so we've had several trees and a lot of limbs in the street we've been picking up. Um, I think that's about it on there. Maybe a few other small things, but just giving people on YouTube kind of what we've been doing, so that's it. Mr. Tracy, thank you. There are more kids in the skate park because of interest in skating. And I've seen um, families with kids with the kick scooters, the little kids with the pedal scooters, they've been on using that way. They haven't used it before. So I just think that was a good move to just clean up the area. And it's easier to maintain, I'm sure. Definitely. I think it's safer if you can come and go. Uh, anyway, so I think that was a nice difference to the kids not being able to go. Yep. Okay, Mr. Tracy, thank you. See, Mrs. Hicks is not here. Chief Johnson, anything else, sir? Uh, just to give an update, so uh, the laptops that were approved to be purchased uh, on the previous agenda, the uh, laptops have showed up. Um, they're going to be in service shortly. Also, the grant money arrived uh, miraculously at the same time, which is not normal, but we were able to get the grant money at the same time that we got the laptops. Uh, there's been a lot of training. A lot of training is going on summertime. We just put on patrol rifle school. Uh, we have uh, multiple different uh, schools that are going on right now as far as a, a race and alert, which is alerts an active shooter for schools. Um, uh, just a ton of training that's going on. Um, other than that, uh, also a little bit of a PSA. Remember <coughs> that we always lock our vehicles and stuff like that. Um, we have, you know, burglaries and stuff like that that happen. And a lot of times, uh, I simply lock in the door. Uh, since I've been working at the police department, I can tell you that I, I haven't ever had anybody break into a vehicle, meaning uh, breaking a window uh, in order to gain access or anything like that. It's generally uh, that the doors open. They open it. They pilfer through, take what they can get quickly um, and go. Also, reminder to everybody, uh, your car unlocked with a firearm in it is also not something that's always the best practice to do uh, we need to try to get those things secured um, now the other thing is, is we're uh, fast approaching badges and bobbers uh, we're going to go tomorrow and we're going to purchase uh, the majority of the uh, prizes for the event and uh, and then pretty much it's every day we're going to be working on something <coughs> in order to get us to that event so we're aiming for 200 registered kids. Uh, Walmart is now participating. They're going to bring a tent out there. Uh, they're going to be giving away some free gifts as well uh, in order to uh, help do this. And I think that this could just every year get bigger. Uh, I invite anybody that wants to come out, anybody that wants to help out to be out there. Um, and that's pretty much what I got for an update. Ask Walmart to bring some extra worms this year. Worms. Well, the worms are provided by the, uh, the uh, wildlife uh I think they're making plans for that. They every year we plan for it and we come up just a little bit short. Uh, they ran so out pretty quick. They, they ran out pretty quick. <laughs> it's just like uh, the fishing poles that get given out for free. Cherokee Nation provides the uh, fishing poles, and this year we are they're bringing 200. Uh, that's our goal because last year they brought 150, and we ended up with 161 kids that registered. That's never a bad thing, but you always feel bad to the last kid that shows up, and you're like. I, I don't have any more to give. So uh, they're bringing 200 this year, uh, and that's what we're doing all of our numbers off of is, is 200 registered uh, attendees. So That's the 27th of April. 27th. In case I didn't say that part. That was the most important part, right? I just said, come on out. At what time? 
It's going to be at 9 o'clock is when it's going to start, and it will be uh, over at 12. 12 is when we'll do our uh, food. And while they're doing the food, that's when we'll tally up the scores to find out who won what. We'll hand out prizes while people are eating. So Maybe Walmart can donate some shovels in case they run out of worms. <laughs> do it the old-fashioned way. Uh, I still got to get with Austin. He's coming tomorrow from Wildlife, and he's going to tell me what uh, what's coming from Gerda. Um, and so that will be resolved by that. And there's a possibility of stocking uh, the lake prior to the deal. We're still trying to get that. We're tr huh? You can't. You can't do it. You're too old. For it. Uh, Don't tell so him when they stock it. We huh? yeah. don't tell him when they stock it. Yeah. So they are trying to work that out to try to get that done to where we would have additional fish in there uh, to make it better. That'd be awesome. Thank you, Chief. Uh, e, Fire Chief Kevin Hutzpool. Chief's not here. Code Enforcement, Mr. Goforth. Don't believe he's back there either. Economic and Community Development Coordinator, Mrs. Deffenbaugh, anything? <clears throat> Uh, Friday afternoon, we met with TSW, who's the company that we engaged for our comprehensive plan, and it was a really good meeting. We had a good meeting and a tour, and they have already sent a long list of documents that they need to kind of build our background, and um, they seem to be really efficient, and I expect them to be on time. So if anyone has any questions. All right, thank you. Mr. Prince? I have no updates. Uh, this is Butcher. Okay, thank you. And I don't either, so that'll bring us to item 14, vote to enter into executive session. A is discussing the employment, hiring, appointment, promotion, demotion, disciplining, or resignation of any individual salaried public officer or employee pursuant to Title 25, Section 307B1. This is probationary police officer William Cantrell. Uh, Take a vote or motions uh, to enter into executive session if you so desire. So moved. Second. I have Bradley and Young. And a word. Like that. Motion and a second to enter into executive session. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, it's 618, so we'll start executive session at this time. We'll say hell goodbye to everybody because we know you're, you're not coming back. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming.